Good morning on Monday. It's Monday. I like a Monday. I do. Chin chin. Uh -uh. So as you saw, I was just kind of tidying up a little bit um, because I did tidy up yesterday and then I went and looked through a little bit more, bit more jewelry and then made a mess again. What can you do? What can you do? Yeah. So that's just, it's just bags of like half made up uh, job lots down there. And then, oh, I can't, do you know what? I counted how many so, like solo items I had and then I completely forgot. Um, it was over 25. No, it was over 30. Cause I remember going, well, if they were five or each minimum profit, then, um, then there's my money back. And I still got like three tubs to go through. So happy with that. I have got 29, 29 eBay, one Etsy going out today. I am waiting payment on this for £320, please. I hope they don't change their mind because they've seen the GSP costs. But we shall see. But a little, you know, cash injection would be quite nice. No, that's not them paying. But that is someone else paying for something so I'm, you know the the sidebar thingy comes up so that is number 30 of items going out on ebay so um that's all right i think that's from friday afternoon to this morning so that's okay picking up a wee smidgy smidgy bit but some of which i think is to do with you guys as well so thank you very much i am going to record another unboxing today um well, rather like show and tell anyway because i've got a box of brooches and then there's some more in here look at this lovely jewelry box that's probably better than a jewelry box i'd have this as like a little like a little writing box nicer than jewelry but yeah there's a load of brooches in here so i'm just gonna see brooches i'm just gonna tip them in this box and i'll record this after i've done my post so that you can see oh, it's a really lovely box I think I'm going to keep this one for my jewellery, you know. I'm hoping that there's like a secret compartment in here. And that, you know, there's the map to the treasure and the Sierra Madre. <coughs> oh dear. Maybe not. Back in a bit, coughing. <laughs> Okay, so here's what's going out today. A job lot of cufflinks and tie clips and things like that, 20 pounds. These sterling silver little brutalist style stud earrings, 6.99. Two necklaces for a total of 21 pound. Um, it's like plaited gold plated one. And then there's, um, who is it again? Pierre Cardin, that one. Yep, £21 altogether. For £25, it's vintage uh, Turnbull and Asa silk tie. Um, oh, right. Yes. I'm going to Susan. Hello, Susan. Um, three bags, three two kilogram bags of jewellery. And then um, for a total of £49.98. And then another one is going out at £16.99, all included in post those ones and then we've got a sterling silver little heart link um vintage bracelet 14.99 a sterling silver little sparkly gem necklace eight pounds fifty these abalone inlay earrings seven pounds twenty one very precise figure there and for seven pounds nineteen these napier screw back clip on earrings pair of little red rose earrings with matching necklace £9.59 
Um, an Egyptian Revival costume jewellery ring, £4.50. This opalescent necklace there, £12. A London Olympics 2012 enamel brooch, um, which is like an iPad collectible pin. It's £5. Sterling silver brutalist dangly earrings, £7.50. The Live 8 DVD set, £9.99. Some gorgeous, I love these. Nine carat gold little rose earrings, Hallmarked Birmingham 1978, uh, £39.99. Part of the price in that, I know it sounds weird, is the Hallmark. So it's not only that they're gorgeous and that they weigh a certain amount as well, but they've got a Birmingham Hallmark um, and it's dated 1978. So that is part of the value of it because someone might have been born in 1978, someone might be married at that point. Um, Someone might have been born in Birmingham, uh, that kind of thing. So it has like intrinsic value as well in that sense. Um, some Libra scales, vintage stainless steel, £9. That was a necklace, by the way. A job lot of broken brooches, £11.19. This spiral cuff bangle, £3.50. Big money there. It's been on uh bit for a while i think this accessorized little multi-strand blue beaded necklace eight pounds an orchid bolo slider adjustable necklace probably gold plated 14 pounds 39 these daffodil engraved welsh slate clip-on earrings so in the middle is welsh slate and it's got a little daffodil in there and it comes in a little box as well and um, that's 15 pounds a pilgrim pendant necklace, this flower, it's £9.59. This tribal lady uh, copper pendant, £8. A neon pink and purple vintage beaded necklace, £5. This chunky black beaded necklace, £9. Um, where is it? In here, there is... Um, this brooch, which went for a fiver, it's the Toledo Damascene one with the, the guys with the cute buns. That went for a fiver. And then for £28, they also bought, because they did two separate transactions, this job lot of pendants and then two lots of the razors. So that's all going to one person. And then a Pilgrim paperclip style necklace for 11 99 and then over on... Etsy is this little sterling silver with a padlock um, clasp. So yeah, that's everything that's going out right now. So I'm going to package this up and then decide what to do next. <laughs> so we're out. It's Monday. What do we do on a Monday? We'll go swimming. Yeah. Um, I haven't checked with my doctor if I'm actually allowed to do it yet, but I figure like I'm all, you know, I know surface heal is different to like internal heal, but I feel strong. And when I went like the other day, it was fine other than like the, the stretching of the scar and stuff, but uh, it felt really good. So I'm going to do it again for sure. So that's what we're off to now. Old. Um and it was really nice on Saturday because I had the pool to myself as well even though there were people sat around the pool I booked myself an hour today because I figure half hour of like slow swimming and then a bit of like sitting in the sauna to you know unclick the back and maybe just a bit of sitting by the pool and you know mooching but yeah that's the plan strangely excited I don't know I, like I brought my bikini and a swimming costume because I don't know what I'm gonna wear yet um, when I went the other day I didn't quite have the guts for the bikini so we'll see what happens today you never know but don't hold your breath we'll see what, how I feel when I get there
Um, so I had to share the pool for a little bit, which wasn't very fair. <laughs> um, but yeah, the lady then left. And um, I got in a good 20 minutes or so or something. Um, yeah, felt good. And I'm just lying here for a bit. <sighs> and then I'll go and get dressed. And then I fancy going into town maybe. Or maybe buying something. Because I like buying stuff. I haven't bought enough this weekend. It's still wet. Just got into town um, as I was getting out the that very handy bus was passing, so I grabbed that and basically I've got some money left from the weekend. I took money out of my account. I've got like mm, 90 quid left I think. So I figure I'm gonna treat myself and buy yeah, I'm gonna buy some records from the market. That's if the place is open. We shall see. And we'll see what I get. Boo hiss. Damn it. Just got in. I went round the charity shops, but they was all the same stuff as the other day. But I did end up buying six books. Six books for two pounds. Um, and a half a pack of tarot cards, which she gave me for free. But I got them because they're Art Nouveau tarot cards. It's only like a bit of a pack, but like they're gorgeous. So I'm hoping that it's got some of the good cards in there. Um, you know, like the hanged man and stuff. That's a good one. Um, they all look to be pretty standard cards. I can't see, probably someone's taken out all the good ones. Oh no! Got the tower. Wee. And is that the high priestess? But there's some lovely ones. We've got the moon. Oh, she's lovely. So um I mean they were free. I don't know what I don't know why or what I'm gonna do with them, but I just um thought they were nice. Obviously I'd um love it if it was the full pack but never mind they're not particularly old they've got like um i was gonna say a barcode but i've got a barcode anyway sorry about the washing machine going as well that's just like got my swimming costume in to give it a rinse and then the rest it was three books for a pound it's 50 pence a book or three books for a pound so i spent two quid so i got stephen king it in hardback now you know that's going to be good. Um, what edition is this? It's only a book club edition. Well, it's 1987. Um, and it says copyright 1986, so that's a pretty good sign. It's a good cover as well. And then I got, there was some paperback Stephen Kings. So thought might as well. So we've got Firestarter. Now the film of that is the one with Drew Barrymore in, I think, isn't it? Here as is a little kid, like before or after E.T. Anyway, so that's, um, when's this one? So this is 1981 and it's copyright 1980. So there we go. Apparently, I mean, I'm probably reading these wrong now. And then we've got Pet Cemetery, another classic. This is, looks like 1985 and it's copyright 1983. And then obviously the best one, The Shining, The Shining. And this one is 1970, no, it's not 1977. No, this is 1988 and first copyright 1977. But obviously, cool. And then the other two books, I got one to sell. Um, so I thought this one is probably like anything to help with like um, you know, like self-help books and things like that. Sometimes worth checking. 
So there we go. This is aut the autism spectrum and depression. And these are going between like 10 and 17 pounds by the looks of it. So considering it was what, like 30p, 33 pence. And then the last one, because I was kind of running out of things, by, like they've just got loads of like, oh, Jeffrey Deaver and Kathy Reish and Wilbur Smith and, you know, many copies of Stephanie Mayer books and things like that. But I saw this one because it's Arthur C. Clarke and I thought, yeah, there you go. It's an Australian version. Um, Arthur, Cle Arthur C. Clarke is one of the giants of science fiction. More than two million books of of his books have been sold throughout the world. There you go. So Tales of Ten Worlds, 15 stories from the best known writer. Right, now there's one. Oh, it's got all, why would you do that? Someone's been doing their long division in there. How rude. Um, this one is 1965. You can tell by the color, can't you? Very atomic. But there's one, there's one Arthur C. Clarke story that it ends with all the stars going out in the sky. Like they're watching the night sky. And I thought, oh, that's so lovely. Because, you know, I'm a hopeless romantic in that I love, you know, nihilism and people dying and disasters and shit like that. But yeah, so I'll, hopefully I'll find it in there. So that'd be quite nice. So that's for me, that's a keeper. Here we go. And the other ones are probably to sell. I might read. I might. I'll see if I can read them first. I haven't read a book in probably over a year because my attention span is just completely shot nowadays. I have to have audio books. Um, yeah. Anyways, so I spent two pound in town. We. I'm gonna. It's like gone three o'clock and I haven't had any lunch. So I'm presuming I'm probably hungry. So I'll have something now. I've got a plate of olives that I'm gonna have and then I've just whacked like half a low carb pizza type thing that I've just made um, in the oven and I'll show you that in a sec once it's done. Wait there, ooh, it's so exciting. Yes, thrill ride. So there you go. Sorry, above the sound of the spinning. This is my sort of pizza with green pesto and mozzarella on a lizard pizza base. It's a little bit Cajun in places. And some olives. Yeah. So just that year doing some drafts. I've got my hair's gone like proper floof. No. Anyway, just that year doing some drafts and looking up some of the stuff I bought like over the last few days that isn't jewellery for once. And I'm happy to find the paperweights that I bought the other day. So this one. Look at that, isn't that fab? So you see through and then, oh, like kind of like a peacock. That one, and then this one, are actually Swarovski. So that's cool. I bought them for a pound each. The little round one goes for um, about 35 pounds. And then this one, even though it's got a tiny little chip in the corner there and on that side, so they're not perfect. But um, one of these sold at auction for like 60 something pounds. So that's all right. <laughs> Not bad at all. And then I'm just gonna look at these ermine ones. Now I'm not sure if they are actually ermine because I can't see anything inside that says ermine. Um, but I'll have to check them out and see if I can find a design number or something like that. But um, yeah. I'm chuffed anyway. Okay, good news is they are both ermine. This one has been started, but literally just that. And this one is pansies on a green cushion, apparently, and I should be able to get about 40 pounds or so for that one. And then this one is a discontinued one, seashells. And I found two that are sold, both are in America, um, for around 150 pounds. <sighs> so not bad at all. So I don't know if you just saw my uh, jewellery unboxing of brooches. This turns out to be Alice Lund of Denmark. This person here, jolly good. 
and this is one of the brooches that was in it this like either austrian or czechoslovakian possibly definitely bohemian uh brooch which is missing enamel and as you can see it's just chipping off there and i've got these paint pens that i haven't really tried yet um i got them off amazon all of these there you go artistro modern art materials oil best permanent and it works on all of these things so i might give them a go and just try and um yeah do something with it sure i'm not sure i've obviously messed up a little bit there so i'll have to pick that bit off there but the pen isn't going into the cracks as much as i would like and also i think maybe i prefer it without the paint i'll see if i can um wash the paint off or something but you know it was a practice so oh well for tea tonight i'm gonna cook some of this it's pasta but it's low carb pasta Two grams of carbs or 2.5 grams of carbs per 100 grams, which is roughly that much. So this is dinner, some of that pasta, I had some leftover mints, um, which split with the mother, so she's got some, and a little bit of cheese on top. In the pasta, I've mixed in the last of the green pesto that I had as well, which is proper lush. So yeah, dinner tonight. I had to get changed into a different top because typically, when you wear white and you eat something with sauce. <laughs> Anyways, I've been reading some of this and um, just in the opening, like not even like the first story, this is, um, well, it's called I Remember Babylon and it's kind of like a preface, I guess. But anyway, it's about um, Arthur C. Clarke meeting like a television person and this television person is um showing arthur like a film that he's made and honestly the way that it's described it's like it's really sexy 
So I'll try and read it without, you know. <clears throat> okay. <sighs> Camera work and editing were brilliant. The ancient stones coming to life beneath the roving lens. There was a breathtaking time lapse shot as the rising sun chased the shadows from the bodies entwined in ecstasy. Sudden startling close-ups of scenes which at first the mind refused to recognise. Soft focus studies of stone shaped by a master's hand in all the fantasies and aberrations of love. Restless zooms and pans whose meaning eluded the eye until they froze into patterns of timeless desire, eternal fulfilment. The music, mostly percussion, with a thin, high thread of sound from some stringed instrument that I could not identify, perfectly fitted the tempo of the cutting. At one moment, it would be languorously slow, like the opening bars of Debussy's La Pre Midi, then the then the drums would swiftly work themselves up into a frenzied, almost unendurable climax. The art of the ancient sculptures and the skill of the modern cameraman had combined across the centuries to create a poem of rapture, an orgasm on celluloid, which I would identify to any man to watch unmoved, which I would defy any man to watch unmoved. There was a long silence when the screen flooded with light and the lascivious music ebbed into exhaustion. He's talking about sculptures in India. Mm, it's so sexy. Anyway, I haven't found that story that I was on about um, the one with the stars going out because um, I distinctly remember it being like some of the last words that were said in the story. Anyways, I'll find it one day. If anybody does know which one it is, please do let me know but that's going to be my bedside book for a while. Might just sit there for a few years, I don't know. Anyways, I'm going to go and dye my hair. It is getting long, isn't it? That's good. That's good. It is growing. But yeah, I'm going to go dye my hair blue, just regular blue. Blue. Um, yeah, tomorrow is um, partially a work day and partially a sit outside in the sun kind of day, having a couple of drinkies, so I won't be filming tomorrow. So I might see you Wednesday or Thursday for who knows what. But yeah, bye-bye now, bye-bye. <laughs>